Good morning, dear family. Welcome to this service of worship. It's an online service, but that's good and that's fine. Um, thank you, Autumn, for bringing your wonderful uh, voice to worship this morning. And it was so good to see that smile here at the end. It's just, it's just great. So there's a lot of joy. Although we're at home, um, we, we celebrate, we celebrate together. If there's any one of you that would like to connect with me via Zoom or via telephone, please do so. Um, it's a difficult time for us now with Omicron and so many people stay home. Uh, don't feel that Johan is not available or Shirley is not available. Please connect with us if there's anything you need to know or if there's anything we can help with. Also welcome to join our coffee hour each and every Sunday after our worship service. Also let me know and I can send you the link. And there's a lot more information at the end of this service. And thank you Brian for setting that up for us each and every Sunday. So you can find our website there and all the other information that is important. Let's call on God in worship. We begin, continue, and conclude the service of worship in the name of God who says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen. Dear family and friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn 172.
Let's join together in prayer. Lord of light, who by the leading of a star revealed your Son to people centuries ago, stir in our hearts that we, who know you now by faith, may come to experience your love and grace in the service of worship today. Draw us beyond the limits of this world and our imagination to the life where your Holy Spirit makes all of life complete. In recalling who you are and what you do, we become aware of who we are and what we have done. And we confess our sins and brokenness before you. Our pride hides the brightness of your light. We so often waste our gifts and ignore the cries for justice and do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us and make us new. Lord Jesus, we long to hear your word and your wisdom in fresh and transforming ways. Open our ears to the call of your voice. Open our eyes to the dawning of a new day. Open our hearts to a new way of living. Amen. In Psalm 5, verse 11 and 12, the psalmist wrote these beautiful words. You welcome with open arms when we run to you. You are famous, Lord, for welcoming God-seekers. This morning I would like to read two passages of Scripture, the one from Isaiah 60 and the other one from Matthew chapter 2. Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will fill with joy. For merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. Vast caravans of camels will converge on you, the camels of Midian. And the people of Sheba will bring gold and frankincense and will come worshipping the Lord. And then a few verses from Matthew chapter 2. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said. For this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. And then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star, was, the star first appeared. And then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. 
They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Now, dear family, our readings this morning both would like to share with us that the good news message of the gospel is for all peoples of this world. In this very well-known passage in Matthew chapter 2 about the Magi, we see people different than the people of Israel coming to Bethlehem to worship Jesus Christ. Our reading from Isaiah 60 this morning <coughs> is a reading that helps us understand God's wonderful involvement with his people Israel during the exile, being in exile because of uh, the relationship with God that didn't go according to plan. And they went into exile because this was God's way in bringing his people, in a sense, back to him. And now they are returning to Jerusalem. But Jerusalem is still in ruins, and everyday life is very difficult. But God shares with them that he will be with them. And he will let his light shine in their lives. He will let his light shine over their lives. And kings and Powerful people from all nations will flock to this light and they will bring the treasures of this world so as to help and assist with the rebuilding of the temple. Now it's very important to know that the kings and the people of this world will be drawn to this light, not because it's Israel's light, but it's because of God's light shining upon them. So in this sense, Isaiah 60 is a very good and wonderful reminder of how people's fortunes, how God's people's fortunes in the Old Testament changed because God was with them. Now you also have a number of theologians that say, well, you can also apply Isaiah 60 to Matthew chapter 2. And when you do that, if you apply this to the life of Jesus, the kings uh, coming to the light is like the wise men, the magi, coming to Jesus Christ who is the light. And when the magi open up their wonderful gifts of uh, gold and frankincense and myrrh, it also refers back to what we have in Isaiah 60, verse 6 when the powerful and the kings of this world come to the light in Jerusalem and also share some of their wonderful gifts. And then there is a third way in which we can deal with both these passages, Isaiah 60 and Matthew chapter 2. And that is to actually apply these two passages to the church. God's call on the church, to be the church. And when we do that, Isaiah's call, God's call in Isaiah, also comes to us as a church family this morning. And we can say, um, God is addressing us and say, Arise, not wealth, because I will shine upon you. And because of this, you also need to let your light shine. So, the church also becomes God's New Testament Israel, God's chosen ones. And we are God's missional people in this world, and we are called to continue the ministry of Christ Jesus in our world. We are called to let our light shine, a call 
for the church, a call for us as a congregation to be the church. Now, dear friends, when, when we look at what's happening in our modern day world, I believe there are many members in mainland churches that feels like we are also experiencing some kind of an exile. And the pandemic is really not helpful. Many congregations struggle with a declining membership. Many congregations might also find themselves in difficulties because of different kind of theologies in our modern day world. Other congregations might struggle because of a lack of resources. And this is why you sometimes hear people lament and they long for the good old days. When we, when we read our uh, reading this morning on uh, the second Sunday of 2022, we know that God is with us and He calls us to let our light shine. Because the glory of the Lord is resting upon us. And now you might ask, so what is this glory of the Lord resting upon us? I firmly believe that the glory of the Lord resting upon the New Testament congregation is what we celebrated during Advent and during Christmas. The coming of the Son of God to this world. The glory of the Lord resting upon us is what we will be celebrating into the future of uh, this new year. One of these days it will be linked. We will be celebrating Good Friday, the cross of Jesus Christ. Then it's Easter Sunday, the wonderful joy of the resurrection, uh, the ascension of Jesus Christ, and then the coming of the Holy Spirit to lead us in God's truth and to lead us in God's life. And all of this is to enable us to continue with the ministry of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote these beautiful words in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, and I would like to quote, For God who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made His light shine in our hearts, so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. God in Christ Jesus comes into our midst, comes into our lives to light up our lives, to assure us of what um, Autumn sang as a centering song this morning, Emmanuel. God is with us. God is in us. And nothing in this world, according to Paul, can actually sever us from the love that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even death can separate us from that love. And this is the glory that shines upon us as God's children. And our mission as a congregation is to reflect this light of Christ into our world, into our society, into our relationships. And we must remember this morning, it's not that we generate this light. It's not your light and my light that shines out into this world. It is the light of God in Christ Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit that we reflect, that shines forth from our lives. When the church carries out her commission and her God-given mission, what God said to His Old Testament people, Israel, will most certainly also be true of the New Testament church. And that is that people will flow to the light. But God shining His light has a real challenge to it. Because for Israel, it means something that they weren't accustomed to. God's light shining upon His people would attract 
and would call people that they didn't expect would come. People that's not of their nationality. People that's not part of their cultural group. People that's not part of their social group and their status in society. God's light will prove like a magnet, magnetic. It will draw all kinds of different people and nationalities and backgrounds to God's light. And dear family, dear fellow Knox members, and members of other congregations that might watch this uh, video this morning, this is very important for us to know that God's light attracts all different kinds of peoples. This is the light that shines into the world, and God is inviting everybody towards His light. So it's important for us when we experience this light of God, of Christ in our lives, to fully embrace what John chapter 3 verse 16 shares with us. For God so loved this world. And we need to know what this means. God loved this world, not just Canadians or Americans or Jews or Palestinians or Africans or Europeans, and we can continue with this list until we cover all the nations of this world. It's not just for us. God loved this world. And then John continues, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life and not perish. So God's light enables us to travel light. Travel light in the sense of re being relieved from our prejudice, being relieved from the things that many a time weighs us down, our set beliefs that many a time is not in line with God's will, but is in line many a time with our cultural customs and our cultural beliefs. God is calling us this morning to be His new people. Because this is what the church is. This is what the congregation is. It is an, an assembly of God's new people. And we are God's new people in a world that is weighed down by hatred and prejudice and discrimination and injustice. And you can add to this list. And just listen this morning again to how Paul perceives this new people of God in Galatians 3, verse 26 and 28. For you are all children of God through faith, through faith in Christ Jesus. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And in Colossians 3 verse 11, Paul wrote and said, In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters. And He lives in all of us. I believe you heard the, um, the, the wonderful, or not the wonderful, the world that people are apart from one another in these verses. Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free, worlds apart. Worlds apart. And yet when people come to faith in Jesus Christ, and His light shines into their lives, and through their actions and through their ministry, they start traveling light, released from all the stuff that brings division amongst people. 
And their lives and their life together start attracting people like light. When we have a light outside in the summer, that light attracts all kinds of different insects. Isaiah 60 and Matthew chapter 2 this morning can be applied to the church so that the church will be the church. And God's call to us this morning as a faith community is Arise not. Let your light shine for all to see for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Lord Jesus, we worship you as the light of the world. Thank you that the good news message shines into lives and changes them. Prepare us for all the new and wonderful things you have in store for our personal lives and our life together as your new people. Help us to let go of the old things that hold us back the things that do not bring life, the things that keep us captive living in the past. Make us resilient to cling to our new identity in Christ. Awake us to the needs of those who carry heavy burdens, who do not know where to turn, those with broken hearts and secrets that affect their lives. Give us grace to share one another's burdens, Awake us to the needs of those who do not have enough to eat or adequate shelter, and those who have enough to share, but no one to share it with. We pray for those who are dealing with health issues and illness, and recovering from illness or surgical procedures. We pray for John Bullock, Lois Stockton, Sarah Andrews, and Bill Winship. We also bring to you Ray and Jean and their family dealing with the loss of their grandson, Ian. And we bring to you Matthew and Carolyn and their family dealing with the loss of their mother, Jan Brown. Lord, and we also bring to you Ria Ritzema and her family dealing with the passing of John this past week. We pray, let your will be done in their lives and give them your peace. We pray for the leaders of this world and our leaders here in Canada. Reveal to them your wisdom and your will and a desire for the world to govern in such a way that God's name will be glorified. Let them embrace the values of your kingdom so they will do what is just and wise. Lord, we pray for our health care here in Canada and around the world, dealing with the large numbers of people coming to hospital because of Omicron. Father, in this morning we pray that you will hear us when we pray the prayer Jesus taught his followers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn this morning is in 712.
family and friends, the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Uh-huh.